As I mentioned earlier, we were going to get the Palestinian perspective on the program as well, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Majid Bema. He's the Deputy Permanent Observer at the State of Palestine at the United Nations in New York. He joins us live from there. Good afternoon to you, sir. Thanks for making the time. Good afternoon. Uh, I know you want to come on the program today and talk about a peaceful resolution to what's happening in Gaza and what's happening in Israel, but surely you see um, that may be unfortunately some time off given the unprecedented scale of what Hamas did over the weekend and now the nature of the Israeli response. So what we're seeing now is the targeting of Palestinian civilians. We're seeing indiscriminate attacks. 1,100 Palestinians have been killed, including 100, 250 children. Entire families are being killed in their sleep. I don't think there is anything in the world that can justify these actions. That must stop. The international community cannot allow uh, the, a right to massacre to, to, to take place before our very eyes. And humanitarian aid cannot be blocked in the manner we're seeing now with uh, Palestinians not having electricity, fuel, food. That uh, requires a strong international response. OK, that requires a strong international response. But you may have heard our Israeli guest who was on just a few moments ago. He said what the Israeli army is doing in Gaza is not collective punishment. It is a legitimate Israeli self-defense after what happened over the weekend. Can I just briefly get your thoughts on that before we move on to what needs to happen now? You know, the uh, Israelis have been blockading uh, Gaza for 17 years. They've had seven assaults on Gaza where they bombed and killed thousands of Palestinians. And they always explained it was to uh, destroy Hamas military capabilities. It was to ensure security. Did that work? Can they now come and say that killing more Palestinians is the answer, that that will provide any, any path forward for anyone, that that will make anyone more safe, Palestinians, Israelis? That's not true. And, uh, you know, I had a European colleague who was telling me, you know, emotions in Europe are strong. We cannot condemn uh, what uh, the Israelis are doing because that could be understood as condoning what has happened uh, by, by Hamas. We cannot uh, tell them to stop because of all the Israelis that were killed. Imagine if the same logic was reversed. If, you to if we told you because of all the Palestinians that were killed, then we need to kill uh, the Israelis. Imagine if I came and said that the Israelis were human animals, like the Israeli generals and the Israeli uh, war uh, minister has uh, said that we, they said we will uh, show them hell. And they, these are not words. This is the reality of Palestinians in the occupied territory and Palestinians in Gaza in particular. And it has been for a while. So I, uh, you cannot say in the same breath nothing justifies killing Israelis and then go on to justify the killing of Palestinians. Well, let's talk then a bit about the international response. You touched on conversations you've been having with European colleagues. You'll have seen earlier this week that the White House was lit up in the colours of the Israeli flag. The Eiffel Tower here in Paris was as well. That didn't happen for the Palestinian flag, despite the death toll in Gaza as well. Um, are you losing the battle of hearts and minds on the world stage? What do you think is happening here? I need people need to, to tell us which Israel they are acting in solidarity with. They should have expressed solidarity with the families of people killed. The, the Palestinians also have members of their families killed. I just said we have 20 members of families being killed. Is it the extreme right-wing government? Is it these policies of occupying, of colonizing, of annexing, of denying the rights of an entire nation, of oppressing it. Uh, they, they, you cannot say, listen, you know, we need to give them the space they need, because these have been their policies before. It's not, it's not the first time they're killing thousands of Palestinians. Somebody should be uh, reasonable and humane enough to tell we need a peaceful path forward. We need to uphold international law. We cannot allow for double standards. There is nothing, nothing in international law that justifies targeting of civilians and indiscriminate attacks. We need to protect all civilians. You, uh, I, I really think there's a moral failure, there's a legal failure, and there's a political failure in being unable 
to utter these words uh, and to act upon them. Mr. Bamia, I appreciate you are not a representative of Hamas, but you are a Palestinian diplomat on the world stage. I know there are plenty of Palestinians who are frustrated by being asked to condemn Hamas all the time. But do you think it's important that you explicitly call out what Hamas did in Israel over the weekend and say, look, that doesn't represent us, that doesn't represent me? So you see, that's why I, I gave you the example of people refusing to condemn what Israel was doing, saying emotions are high in Europe. That's what they're telling us. How do you think emotions are in Palestine? You know how hard it is to come here with thousands of Palestinians being killed, with the situation we are in, with a besieged Gaza, and say we want peace? The Israeli officials, when Israelis were killed, what did they come to your news to say? They came to justify killings. So it's uh, 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 this. The, uh, the Europeans are saying we cannot condemn Forgive because me, that are you, are you justifying the killings what, uh, what of ha Hamas? Uh, that's what that's what I just said. We didn't come to justify. We came to say we don't justify killing of civilians. Exactly mm -hmm. the opposite. But you cannot justify the killing of Palestinian civilians. But they are saying they cannot condemn what Israel is doing because that would be condoning. Uh, what Hamas has done. And now you, uh, it would appear if I condemn what Hamas is doing, it would be condoning what Israel has done for mm. 75 years or what Israel is doing today. If that is the rationale we are operating under, that is not our role. But the fact that we are able to come here and still speak of international law and peace while Israel is saying we are human animals and killing and butchering. These are, this is the Israeli government. You say we cannot equate Hamas and Israel. And some people will tell you we cannot equate occupying power and occupied people. You will say, but they have reasons to kill you. And some people will tell you, oh, well, then the Palestinians have reasons to kill them. We say this logic is catastrophic for everyone, for the Palestinian people, for the Israeli people, for the region, for the future of the uh, international law-based order. I think we are being as reasonable, as human as we can, while our people are being butchered in Gaza and while people are also being killed in the West Bank. We have to, uh, two, over 200 Palestinians who have been killed in the West Bank in the last few months. Mm. So I, I, I hope you hold us to the same standards. Uh, that you hold the Israeli officials. If I said anything close to what the Israeli official would said, we would have been expelled. We would have been boycotted. We would have been sanctioned. Don't allow them to get away with murder. That is not the path for anyone. This led us here. This kind of logic, an eye for an eye will turn the whole world blind. This kind of logic is what got us here. Ending the occupation, finding a path to peace and to coexist side by side, live and let live. But that requires action to stop the bloodshed and to stop these policies that are unlawful and that are destructive for the future of our nation and of all nations. You speak extremely passionately, sir, and I want to get uh, your thoughts on what is happening today in the Gaza Strip within the last half an hour or so. We've heard the confirmation that Gaza's only power plant providing fuel to the enclave is no longer operating, what will that mean for Palestinians in Gaza? And will the Palestinian mission at the UN that you uh, represent, are you lobbying now to try and get uh, electricity up and running again? Humanitarian access is a top priority. Stopping the bloodshed is a top priority. Reversing these decisions of starving people. You know, it's, uh, Gaza was already besieged for 17 years, uh, repeated uh, assaults. People have no shelter. They have nowhere to go. Bombs are being dropped over their heads everywhere. Now they will be in the dark. They won't be able to communicate with the external world. People will not be able to reach their families. People will not be able to know uh, what to do, how much people require help. It, it, that cannot be uh, something that the world can sit idly by while it happens. So. Yes, you have to stop Israel. Of course you have to stop Israel. And of course you have to find a way for humanitarian access. And of course they cannot collectively punish two million Palestinians once more and once again. So, yes, we will be talking to the president of the Security Council, mm -hmm. to council members, to states. But the first step is all these messages to Israel in the last few days have prepared the ground, were interpreted by Israel as license to kill, to, to do whatever it sees fit. People have to start walking them back now or they will be complicit with the reality that is now prevailing in Gaza. And you've been a Palestinian diplomat for a long time. I'm sure this isn't the first time you've seen Gaza come under attack. Um, is it your sense that Gaza needs to brace now for 
a long conflict, potentially a ground invasion? And again, are you lobbying at the international level, perhaps to try and get some of those Palestinians who are trapped out via a humanitarian corridor? The entire Palestinian people is trapped under occupation. The entire mm. people in Gaza are trapped under blockade and bombs. You, 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 you know, we are lobbying. It, it has been heartbreaking for us these last few days to see, again, the, the, the racism in the response, the lack of humanity and solidarity towards the Palestinian people, the, the lack of uh, ability to recognize all the conditions that have led us to this terrible place today and address them by saying, we will deal with that later. And what about the people being killed now? We could have saved lives. We have an obligation to save lives. You cannot say, uh, you, we need to give this uh, more time. This is more blindness. This is more madness. And again, everybody will pay the price of it. But starting now by the Palestinians who are still being killed as we speak. Has it been frustrating for you that the that issue that you talk about understanding the roots of this conflict, do you feel like, I don't know, that the ha that hasn't been taken seriously at the UN level that you operate at over the past couple of months before this particular bout of violence? Uh, listen, I mean, you know, if, if, if you want to uh, address domestic politics and if you want to address this is an ally and unconditional support, what does it mean, unconditional support? Nobody deserves unconditional support. Nobody deserves support when they are acting the way Israel is acting now. Again, you can distinguish between the families and you can distinguish between a government that is uh, having a destructive policy. That is, you know, it is, again, it's a government. It's somebody you have relations with. It's somebody that you consider among your closest ally. I wouldn't be proud to call Israel an ally, given how Israel has been acting, not for the last few days, but for the last few decades, 75 years of denying the, the rights of an entire nation. So for people, they want to say history started on the 7th of October. Don't say that to those who have been under blockade for 75 years, or under occupation for 55 years, who have been dispossessed for 75 years. They, we cannot. You can try and say that in, in, in your halls, but you cannot tell Palestinians that the reality they've lived under is irrelevant. But again, our purpose is, of course, the rights of our people and their freedom, but it's, it is peace for all. Everybody benefits from peace. And the idea that Netanyahu promoted there could be peace without the Palestinians. We can continue killing them, colonizing them, and we will enjoy life and tranquility and peace. This madness, we told the world, act, act. He is taking us into a terrible, terrible path, down a terrible path that needs to be stopped. And people reacted once Israelis were killed, once again. Now they need to act while Palestinians are being uh, murdered. Majid Bamiya, the Deputy Permanent Observer of the State of Palestine at the United Nations in New York. Thank you. Thank you.